one word Darkness has to retreat Just one touch I feel the presence of man Just one touch My eyes are open to see My heart can't help but there's nothing that I God can do. There's not a mountain that He can move. Oh, praise the name that makes a way. There's nothing that our God can do. Just one word, hear what's broken inside me. Just one word.
sometimes on this journey I get lost in my mistakes What looks to me like weakness Is a canvas for your strength My story isn't over My story's just begun And failure won't define me Cause that's what my father does Said failure won't define me Cause that's what my father does not the end game the journey's where you are you never want it perfect you just want it my heart if the story isn't good failure's never final when the father's in the room failure's never final Father's in the room. Ooh, lay your burdens down. Ooh, you're in the Father's house. Check your shame at the door. Cause it ain't welcome anymore. Ooh, you're in the Father's house.
Everyone needs compassion A love that's never failing Let mercy fall on me Everyone needs forgiveness The kindness of a Savior The hope of a nation
thank you guys saw our Facebook page. Um, we had a great day here with the youth for our end of the school celebration. Uh, there's about a 98 photo dump on our <laughs> on our Facebook page, and Alan wasn't feeling well, so we weren't able to make it. But um, I saw a, a kitty slot, like a little kitty pool, inflatable pool, and I said. Like, what are they going to do with that? Then I realized they were playing slot baseball. Um, so from what I hear, we served about 80 hamburgers, hot dogs. We have water slides, water balloons. It looks like the kids had an awesome time. So thank you for everyone that came out and helped with that. If you're new to Christian Life Center, you can text the word CONNECT to 337-232-1052. It's a great way for you to stay connected. Anything we have going on at the church will get a little friendly reminder no matter where you're at. Monday night prayer tomorrow night at 6.30 here in the sanctuary. If you can make it, we would love to have you. You can text any prayer requests that you have to the number. Um, Tuesday night, celebrate recovery. I want to talk about that for a minute um, because people that I've talked to, even people that attend here regularly, um, they're still not certain about what Celebrate Recovery is. And although it is for uh, drug and alcohol addiction, it is for any hurt, habit, or hang-up that you may have. It covers addiction, anger, codependency, eating disorders, love and relationship addiction, physical, sexual, emotional abuse, alcohol, drug addiction, gambling addiction, just really anything that you're struggling with. Celebrate Recovery can help you, and it's here every Tuesday night at 6.30. Also, we have the landing, which is an extension of Celebrate Recovery. It's for the youth. Um, if it's ages, hang on a second, I have it. It is geared toward junior high and high school age children. Um, also, I don't know if Alan realizes this, but he had an opportunity to get into Iberia Parish jail system. And Celebrate Recovery actually has a program called Celebrate Recovery Inside. Did you even know that? Okay, so he knew that. He's the man with the plan. So he knew. Lane Lege knew that. Oh, Lane told me. Lege knew that. Okay, so so actually we're not just like, it's part of Celebrate Recovery. Celebrate Recovery Inside. So um, every Wednesday night at the jail, um, we're bringing the program to the jail. And also on Friday night, we bring it to the men on Wednesday night and to the women on Friday night. And relationships are being formed um i think a, a gentleman is going to be uh getting out in about three weeks and he plans to come visit the church so we're really really excited about that men's prayer breakfast june the 19th that's father's day is it at nine o'clock do we have a time let's just say nine o'clock i have a feeling bacon is going to be um permeating through the building when we walk in <laughs> Yeah, there'll be lots of bacon, trust me, because Pastor Lane is bacon. That's his thing. Um, final thing, the gathering conference is in West Monroe, June 7th through the 9th. So if you're interested in attending that conference and you're available, um, please see Pastor Lane, um, and he can give you some more information on that. Today is Mission Sunday. Um, you see our little mission box out front here, front and center. Um, we uh, help several ministries, both both here locally and then also abroad. We have um, Tony and Shasta. They are in Lithuania. I forget them. Uh, unfortunately, I don't need to do that. They're, they've been there many years doing great things. And then also we have Greg and Nikki Byers over in Thailand that we also help. So if you feel led to give to missions today, um, we would love that. Eshers, if you want to come forward, we'll take up our tithe and offering and as well as our missions offering. Awesome. Father, we just thank you, God, for the opportunity to be here, God, on Memorial Day weekend, Jesus. We're just so thankful, God. We're thankful for all that you've done for us, God. We thank you for your sacrifice, Jesus. We thank you for your blessings. We thank you, God, that you've given us the ability to give back to you, to sow into your kingdom, God. We know that this is bigger than us, God. Help us to be kingdom-minded, God. Help us to sow into your kingdom with all of our heart. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Is
where I lay it down Every burden, every crown This is my surrender This is my surrender Here is where I lay it down Every lie and every doubt This is my surrender Do whatever you want to
part again. Lord, whatever you want to. Do whatever you want to. Do whatever you want to. I will make room for you. Do whatever you want to. Do whatever you want to. Between you and the Lord this morning. Religion, your way is better. Come on, just between you and the Lord this morning. Your way is better. Shake up the ground of all my tradition. Break down the walls of all my religion. Your way is better. Your way is better. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise this morning. Whatever you want, Lord. Whatever you want, God. Whatever you want. Thank you, worship team, for leading us. Wow. I love the last Sunday of every month where we gather together. So our youth, children, we stay in and worship together as families. And, and wow, that can we just give them another hand? That's reflected on the platform as well. Love. Come on. The Bible says, let everything that hath the voice, right? Come on, give God some praise. Sometimes I have to sing by myself because nobody else can tolerate it. <laughs> Come on, everything that hath breath, give God some praise. I think sometimes, you may be seated. I'm going to ramble here for just a moment before I get into the Word. I think sometimes we make church a spectator event. And we'll come and we'll watch, we'll come and we'll view from the pew, so to speak, of what they're doing up there, how they're singing up there, how they're performing up there. And we don't, and we'll engage if it's something we can engage in, and we'll really jump in if it's our favorite song. You know what I'm talking about. But if it's something new we're not for sure about, then we'll just wait it out and maybe we'll jump in with them the next thing. Now, can I tell you this morning when we come to the house of God, we worship together. You may not have a microphone setting on the back row, but your voice should be just as loud and your worship and praise be just as vibrant as what's happening up here. Amen. Because I don't mean to hurt your feelings this morning, but I did not come to church this morning to impress you. Amen. But I did come to church this morning to worship him and to magnify him. And I am so glad that we have the opportunity to come and worship the Lord together. As a matter of fact, the scripture says, even as you see the day of the Lord approaching, we should lean in more and more and focus more and more on the opportunities that we have to do this. Because I'll tell you this, you've lived through it. COVID can shut it down. The government can shut it down. Those can make issues can, can shut it down. But I have a feeling that if that starts to happen, we're going to find some place to gather together and worship the Lord. We may have to meet together in the field six feet apart, whatever it takes, amen. But there can be nothing that stops the worship and the praises of God's people going up to him, amen. I'm gonna preach this morning if I gotta preach to myself today, amen. But I'd rather you preach with me, praise the Lord, <laughs> amen. It's so good to be here. And uh, Sarah said, hey, last night, uh, just a great, hey, hey, tip of the hat, uh, 
Tammy and Jarvis. Hey, Shane and Lexi, would y'all just stand up just real quick? And I just want to honor you guys. Thank y'all so much. Amen for coming early. They were up here around noon setting everything up. And I think Jarvis single-handedly inflated over 840 water balloons. Come on. I didn't know he had that in him. Uh, well, there is a technique that you can use, but anyway, so thank y'all so much for leading our children and youth. I just want to honor you guys as well, and uh, worship team, great job this morning, as Tara had mentioned, uh, Monday night prayer, a Tuesday night CR, and we have a host of people that have went through step training that helped lead that. And you guys are just amazed me. You're a different person, those of you that are leading, than what you were a year ago. You may not see it, but I see that. And you have grown so much in the Lord and also reaching out, leading others. Uh, on Wednesday nights, I think, Lane, you were in St. Martin this past Wednesday night. And I had an opportunity to go with Alan. And is Kyle still in the house somewhere? Somewhere? Uh, Kyle, uh, Wednesday night as well, we were in Iberia Parish. And uh, Tara, how many cookies do you make during the week and bake stuff? Three dozen? That was just for Wednesday night? That's not including Tuesday, right? And I tell you what, she, she's going to open up a bakery, I guess, on her block. I don't know. And so we... we Six dozen. So we went into Iberia Parish Jail. Kyle went with us. He did two worship sets with the acoustic. That's the first time. So we're in this room with about 15 or so guys uh, lined up, very polite along the wall. We step in, and it's just us and them. And, uh, of course, when you walk in, Alan said, Hey, Pastor, you carry the cookies. <laughs> they'll, they'll give you credit immediately. So we set it on the table. They sit patiently, and they wait for permission to approach, and they devour those cookies. They're gone quickly. A great time of worship with those guys and delivered a word to them that I felt the Lord had placed on my heart and this is consistently going on with the men's on Wednesday night and also a ladies group that has started up on Friday night with them building those relationships how many know sometimes we just make wrong decisions right the only difference is the walls that separate because some of you made those decisions same decisions but you didn't get caught it, 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 and others did, all right? It doesn't mean we're perfect, but uh, thank God that even in those situations, God still gives mercy and grace from the kingdom, amen? Hey, man, uh, I want to preach for just a little while this morning. Uh, if you would like to stand one more time for the reading of the word of the Lord, I'm going to turn your attention. Our youth and children will stay in. I'm going to preach for just a few moments this morning, share with you what the Lord has placed upon my heart, and we're going to celebrate communion together today before we're dismissed, and it's going to be a great day. It already has been. If you would turn to Psalms 103 and verses 1, and let's read these verses of Scripture together. Uh, this translation is the New Living Translation, and uh, I will quote this again in the King James in just a moment. But this, can you read with me? Let all that I am praise the Lord. With my what? My whole heart, I will praise his holy name. Verse 2 says, Let all that I am praise the Lord, and may I never forget the good things he has done for me. May I never forget the what? The good things he has done for me. For me, sometimes it's easy to forget. I want to preach this morning, hey, on remember. Just remember. Lord, we thank you for your word, your presence that is in this house. Lord, thank you, God, for your people and those that have gathered here this morning. Our prayers are for those others that are traveling this morning, today. And Lord, I pray that your word would go forth to touch each and every individual, every situation that is manifested, represented in this building today. It's Somebody said in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Hey, Memorial Day weekend, and as we stop and pause to reflect upon those that brave heroes that have given their life in service to our country, whether overseas or, or wherever it may be in theater of war, and even those that, that, that even in training, they've lost their lives, just so that we have this freedom this morning. And sometimes we need to be reminded of the freedom that we have. And unless you've been outside of this country and have visited other countries, it's kind of lost because we live inside of this amazing. American bubble. Turn to your neighbor and say, you living in a bubble. Now, I know I probably look like a bubble. I went to the doctor yesterday and he said, I have to leave, lose 40 pounds. I said, doctor, you need glasses. <laughs> he told me that and I still have to pay him. Oh. Anyway, but we do live inside this bubble 
And so those opportunities that I've had to travel outside the country to, to Africa on missions trip, and I remember flying into Johannesburg, and then we would stay the night there, and I'm like, this is kind of cool. It's kind of like an American-type uh, culture and vibe with the high-rise buildings. Then we go and get on a small plane, and we fly over to Maputo, where the missionary Williams picks us up, and he puts us in the van, and we're traveling from Africa, and we're going to uh, Moz traveling across the border into Mozambique, and he turns to us, and he says, hey, let me do the talk. I'm like, I can talk. No, let me do the talking. Give me your passports. I'll handle it. And I'm like, it's the big deal. And so in that transition, as we check out of one country and going into the other, the smiles, the, the, the atmosphere is different. And he's telling me, guys, he said, just be prepared. As soon as we get into Mozambique, they can pull us over and check our luggage on side of the roads. Just be prepared for that. That's exactly what happened. Guys with big rifles pull you over, you pull over. And he says, and whatever they want to take, they can take. And my American brain is just like really wrestling with that because I realized then I am no longer in America. I don't have to worry about that when I travel to Texas. All I have to worry about is the cowboy fans over there. And that's the worst thing we have to worry about, right? I don't have to worry about that when I go over to Mississippi, you know. I don't have to worry about that. It's just Ole Miss and, and all of that, Starksville. And, and, and so that, that's the worst that it gets over there are speed traps. We don't have to worry about those things here. And the reason that we have the freedom is because of those that have enlisted and even shed their blood so we can do what we're doing here today. And I thought about that this week and I thought really the, the tragedy really of the whole situation is this, is that we have a freedom that we don't even realize that we have. That we've been blessed with a blessing that we don't re even understand the scope or the depth of the blessing that we have. And the real tragedy is this, that you live in a country with freedoms and rights regardless of who you are, that you can do anything that you want. And the tragedy is that we don't. That we don't live and operate and take advantage of the freedoms that we have. So Lord, I want to do more. Not just more to be busy, but God, I want to do more for you. I want to lay down my will, God, for you. Use me. Let me be the hands and feet of Christ. Did you know other countries are now sending missionaries into the U.S. to reach the U.S.? Because we've had this generation that has come up, going on two generations almost, a generation that has raised up that no longer goes to church. Now, all of you my age and up, you probably remember, come on, Sunday mornings, we're going to church. Back in the day, and I'm preaching to the youth and to the kids right now, some of you already tuned me out, and you're wondering uh, what your high score is on Fortnite or whatever, who's checking it on Roblox. But I, I remember back in the day, there was a culture we lived in this country that, that if you had a good neighbor, there was a good chance that they rode to church every Sunday morning. They were a Christian. And if you knew of a Christian, there's a good chance that, that they were a good neighbor. But today, that's totally opposite. Today, the, the social culture and the Christian culture has divided itself. So, and, and our social culture is trying to now to re-identify who we are and what we are. And, and this gap has opened up so much that those Christian values that we grew up with, and let me clarify, not political values, but Christian values, and there is a difference. Can somebody say amen? But, but these biblical values, the values of Christ that we grew up in and on and, and became part of our fiber that the social culture has drifted and now it opposes and is anti-Christ. And that's going to continue to happen. While we have the freedom to do what we're doing, we need to take advantage of it. While we have the liberty to go and do and share the gospel, we need to be doing more of that. I told this uh, several times that during COVID when this place was shut down, it was just a camera and Kyle on the guitar, my CPR mannequin sitting right there that I would dress up. And for two months I would come and preach to a CPR mannequin and people watching online. 
And my wife says, what are you doing? I said, this is for my sanity because I'm battling the prayer. I don't know what's going to happen. Well, we don't know. We don't know what's going to happen. Will there be a church? Will people come back? We don't know. And there's so much things that, that we did not know. And I remember after I did the route, we finished the service. And I felt like Joel Osteen, you know. And hey, hallelujah. And we cut the camera off. And I was about to walk off the platform. I was frustrated in my spirit. I said, God, what are you doing? We're the church. What are you doing? And he said, yeah, you're the church. He said, what were you doing? And I'm like, wow, what's that, God? What were you doing when you did have the freedom together? What were you doing before the churches shut down because of COVID? What were you doing? And come on, we've all had those moments when we've been in a bind and we've said this. Has it, you don't have to identify, but... Come on, give me just a good nod if you've done this. I'm in a bind. Lord, if you just get me out of this bind. Am I the only person? Lord, Lord, if you just get me out of this bind. Lord, I, whether it was by my fault or not my fault, but Lord, I'm, Lord, if you just get me out of this. And what do we do after that? The, ne the next words and statements from our heart and our mouth usually, Lord, I will do this for you. And what happens is God gets us out of a bond. We make it through somehow, some fashion. As old timers said, by hook or crook, whatever that means. We get through it. And then what happens? We what? We forget. We forget what we told the Lord that we would do. And so the psalmist here in Psalms 103 and 1 and 2, we read this verse of scripture, let all that I am praise the Lord not half heartedly God but, but is there a place that I can come to where I just sell out with my whole heart not just part not just a Sunday exercise that I do then I go back to do, being me Monday through Friday and Saturday not just a, a time span of two hours on Sunday where I become God conscious and lean in to worship and enjoy the songs and I, I'm spiritual for two hours and then Monday through Saturday I become carnal again doing all the other stuff but is there a place that I can come to that my heart and my affections tune into God and I lean into God and I can have a relationship with him that I begin to love God more than I do the things of the world and that the things of the world no longer have the appeal. The temptation, yes. The appeal, yes. But there is no longer the greater desire to connect with the things of the world or my fleshly desires or my carnalness that, that I would often lean into. But now there's a greater desire to lean into the things of God and to please Him. And He says, let all that I am praise the Lord. And I love that. We read this together. May I never forget the good things He does for me. For those of you that are raised up in the King James language, this is the verse of scripture that we would often read in King James. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and what? And forget not all his benefits. Sometimes it's good to pause and remember. But as time passes by, we have this unique ability to forget. Uh, I love in part this technology that we have because on our phones, we get this time hop of photos, right? All the photos we've taken a year ago. And I'm like, wow, I wasn't thinking about that. And I couldn't remember the details before, but I see the photo and now all the memories around that photo comes back. We sat down at the table yesterday and, and I got a, a time hop and whatever you call it. And, and I, it was from a year ago. It was a photo of two young men that looked totally different. It was Ethan and Sean that looked like they were eight. And I'm like, this was only a year ago. I receiving awards at a banquet of school. I'm like, wow, look how much things have changed in only a year and I remember my grandmother's passed away, but I always appreciated those, those conversations after dinner when, 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 when what we would call as kids, the old folks would begin to speak about the old times. I remember getting a bath smelling like dial soap or Irish spring 
while the adults were sitting on the front porch late at night, still talking, windows open, attic fan running, drifting asleep on the couch until somebody would pick us up and put us in the bed. And they were talking, reminiscing about the old times. And I loved hearing those stories. I love the story hearing about how my grandmother and my grandpa met on my mom's side of the family. That was the farmer side of the family. My papa and mama Myers. Does anybody say papa anymore? Papa and mama. And so I remember asking her, he passed away when I was just young, but I, I have childhood memories of him, but I remember asking her, I said, mama, how did y'all meet? Because she was from Florida. And, and how did you get to Louisiana? How did y'all even meet? And she said, I was coming over here to visit some kin folks. And, and we were in their house. And we were about to go into the house. We were standing in the yard. And she said, I looked across the road and I saw your grandpa. She said, he had the darkest coal black hair I've ever seen. And I remember asking my relative, who is that handsome man across the street? At that particular time, what she did not know, my grandpa was across the street asking the same question. My, oh my, I don't know what language was back then. But she said, who is that across the street? Said, oh, that's Allie. She's from Florida. These words came out of his mouth. I'm going to marry her. Right there. So unbeknownst to him, after saying that, they went in and cooked dinner and invited them over to eat. It was not Domino's pizza with extra cheese. It was turnip greens and cornbread. Oh, that's the loudest some of you have been all day right there. Hey, for, for a kid, I just want to tell you, before food came out of a window, it came out of the field. Somebody ought to say amen on that. And you had to cook it. There was a day that existed that they didn't have microwaves. Oh, some of you young folks would have a little struggle. Y'all make fun of us without understanding technology. You would not understand working in the field. <laughs> but, to, but we are better together. <laughs> Help us with technology. We may show you how to plant a tomato plant. Hallelujah. But that story was incredible. And I love, they're, they're both deceased now, but I captured that story and I remember that. And I guess that would be a case of, of love at first sight I don't know and turn up green and cornbread hallelujah God always helps out but those things we love to remember that as time passes by that we do forget my mother-in-law suffered with dementia and she lived with us for many many years before she passed away and it was heartbreaking to see that begin to happen when she would go into treatment and I remember one particular time they were trying new medication and some of you have family members no doubt that have suffered with this if you walk through this and you can identify with what I'm talking about that we would go see her and she wouldn't know who we were or she would know who we were but she was unfamiliar with the surroundings and, and it, it was her but it wasn't her so much so that uh, my wife asked the doctor what have you done to my mom where's my mom she's right no where's she at it's because we, we have the person in body but the mind is somewhere else and and we've lost that connection anything that we could speak about and in some cases it becomes more severe and you're aware of this that they don't even recognize the person that we lose the ability to share those memories together and and i was looking and reading some articles on dementia and the symptoms include cognitive and sensory changes that that memory loss generally noticed in near and dear ones Difficulty in communication, especially finding the right words to communicate. Reduced ability to organize, plan, reason, or solve problems. Confusion, disorientation. On and on the list goes and leads into depression, anxiety, mood swings, agitation, and then apathy. And I was reading through that and I thought, wow, could it be, Lord, that there is also a spiritual element to dementia that we as Christians have to be aware of as well? that after a period of time if we're not careful that we will begin to forget what God has done for us 
That's why it's important to continually to remember and to share. So much so that later on in Deuteronomy, or, or earlier in Deuteronomy 4 and 9, whenever God was bringing the children of Israel out of Egypt after nearly 480 years of slavery, you know what he told them? He says, be careful, beware, take heed. When God says to take heed, I want to know, God, what do I need to look out for? It was not the Egyptians. He did not say take heed unless the Egyptians come and take you back into bondage. He did not tell them to take heed over other foreign dignitaries with great armies that may not understand. The Lord told them to take heed lest they forget. God wasn't concerned about another country, another nation, or another army, or another Pharaoh. What God was concerned about was the people of God forgetting what he had done for them. And today, that's what we often run up against when we live in this 15-second news cycle where so much stuff is competing for our attention, where breaking news used to be maybe once a week and it was huge, but now everything is breaking news. And our phones are dinging in our pockets with emails and reminders, and we have schedules to go and grocery stores to stop and kids to shuffle around to activities and school schools and after school events and summer camps and all these things that sometimes we get so busy that we forget what God has done for us he says this in Deuteronomy 4 and 9 and listen to this in the amplified translation he says only pay attention and watch yourselves closely so that you don't forget the things which your eyes have seen that you don't forget the things that your own eyes have seen he's not talking about something that you've heard passed down from generation to generation but he's speaking of current events that you've experienced you've celebrated that your own eyes have seen that they do not depart from your heart all the days of your life and listen to this parents make them known to your children and your grandchildren impressing these things on their mind and penetrating their heart with these truths don't you forget I think sometimes there, there, there's a fine line here and there's wisdom in this that every mom dad couple family has to walk this out because what we do sometimes is we protect our kids and sometimes depending upon the age right we protect our kids from what we're going through as a family we, what, we shelter them because that's what we do. We nurture, we raise, and we shelter them. So with our kids, we sometimes we place them in the bubble of safety over here while we fight hell over here. But can I tell you this morning that your kids know more than what you think they know? That your kids are watching you. Your kids know the change in your attitude and the inflections in your voice. They know when parents are sitting down having a quiet conversation, something is serious. They know the change in schedule. They know the change in routine. Your kids are a little bit smarter than what you give them credit for sometimes while you're trying to protect them. The, what may benefit them depending upon age and how you feel led to do that is let them have a view of the battle that you're fighting not to overwhelm them and cause fear but allow God to reveal himself to them through your own struggles and through your own obstacles that you're dealing with and what does it do it builds a faith in them that you're not only telling them that God is able to get you through the situation with their situation but they watched it with their own eyes for themselves on what God has done in the life of mom and dad and if God has done it in the life of mom and dad then God can do it in my life and it will be a story that they pass down to the next generation because God is faithful. We just have to make sure that we don't forget. 
that we forget, that we become overwhelmed, that we become, that we are overcome with this type of spiritual dementia so that we have a memory loss of what God has done for us, that now we have difficulty in even communicating and remember because we haven't shared. We, we've lost sight of reason and plan and we forget that he's the answer to our problems. We live life confused and disoriented and, and we enter in and we deal with this depression and anxiety and, mood and agitations and then we come to the place of apathy where what does it really matter any more anymore but we need to remember what God has done I've shared this story before but I, as our ushers we get ready to serve communion this morning I, I, I remember the night that we went to a little Pentecostal church and uh, I was a teenager and there was probably 30 folks there in that old church maybe. Two rows of pews. You could almost reach across and touch the walls. When at the end of the service, the pastor gave an appeal and I went forward as a young teenager. I just felt the strong and the pulling of God so much. I, I, didn't, I just knew I needed God. And at that particular night, when I began to repent and confess, and I don't know, I was just asking God... Uh, it was godly sorrow, repentance, Lord, I'm sorry. I knew that I was lost. That realization came upon me at that age. If I was to die that night, I knew that I was lost. But I remember the love of God that just began to flood me and the spirit of God that began to fill me. And, and before I knew it, I heard myself speaking this language. I, didn't even, I, I was speaking, into, I, I've never done that before. Nobody taught me, nobody could, it just happened. It was an experience. That night, the pastor mentioned about baptism and I said, let's go. I was in 10, let's go. I felt 10 feet tall and bulletproof in God, hallelujah. If he would have said, jump off the roof, I'm like, I don't need a ladder, I'll get up there. Just tell me where to jump. We did not have a nice building like this or a big screen that would lower down with, a, with heated water baptistry behind the screen. The church didn't even have a baptistry. It was February. But there was a fella in the church that had a cow pond down the road. And on a Sunday night in February, hovering probably in the high 30s, it was kind of like the old picture with a couple of cars out in the field for headlights. And I walked out there in that little pond with the pastor and he baptized me and a couple of cows walked up, thought it was late night feeding, I guess. I don't know what they thought. You know what, I, I don't remember it being cold. I don't remember that. I just remember how they're so thankful that God would save me. And I don't want to forget that. I don't want to forget that. I remember when my wife and I, and I've shared this, we're, we dealt with a miscarriage and it was seven years we were wondering if we were going to ever have kids we often laugh and we, we say this at one time in our life we cried because we did not have kids now we cry because we do have kids so you're just going to cry either way and, and I, I remember this is a longer story but, but I remember we, we actually were looking into things and, and, and with the papers were on the table that had just came in and and we just gave it to God. It's a long story. It's a process, but we gave it to God. And, and I, re, I, rem, I remember whenever the doctor came out and says, congratulations, it's positive. And then my daughter was born, and I was able to go in with her and carry her to the, from the delivery room to the nursery in the hospital. And she was wrapped up and just so tiny. And I remember weeping the entire way carrying her and we're like God this is a miracle God thank you you've answered prayers I don't want to forget that those moments that would appear to be spontaneity during the day that that I, I remember I'll share the story and, and worship team come up or I'll ramble on for 30 minutes telling stories at least you'll get to stand and hear me 
I remember one time when I was much younger, married, and uh, we had moved and I was looking for a job. I went down and filled out some applications, but underqualified, overqualified, or not qualified. And I was so frustrated. My wife was riding with me in the vehicle, and as we're passing up a highway, there was this construction project on a commercial building taking place. And, and uh, my wife, uh, husbands, I'll just tell you this. Your wife is your helpmate, and sometimes it's okay to listen to her. Because sometimes God will speak to you through your wife. I know that does not help your pride. But I'm just saying, you'll be wise to listen to her. And she said, why don't you pull over there and ask them if they need help? My pride, I'm like, I am dressed in dress slacks and dress shoes and a long sleeve shirt. And this scenario was going through my mind. And I'm about to walk up in the construction site and ask these guys if they need some help. I'm like, I oh, U-turned, and that's exactly what I did. I remember walking up, there was about five or six guys there. The slab was poured, the red iron was up, metal was over the top, but it was all open. They were framing up the walls, and there was a guy, he was, I remember walking up to this guy, and uh, he had, his name was Andy, and we developed a great relationship after this, my first person I talked to was Andy Buchanan. I love that one. He's deceased now, and I did his feel. I love that man. And he had those glasses about right here. And he, I remember he looked over at my shoes, and he followed my shoes up and looked at me and didn't say a word. And look, he just kind of shook his head like, what does this fellow want? And, and he went back to work. I'm, and so I said, hey, is there a boss man around? And I walked over and there was a guy there who's the boss man. He said, can I help you? I guess he thought I was an inspector or something. And I said, uh, hey, I'm looking for a job. You know what he did? Back to the dress shoes. <laughs> and he asked me this question. He said, can you even read a tape measure? Which to a man is insulting, by the way. Yeah, yes, I can read a tape measure. And his wife was there for some reason. God was working through wives this day. And he said, well, leave your number. If I need any help, I'll call. So I got back in the vehicle. We went home. I, my wife says, how did it go? And I'm like, they probably think I'm crazy out here looking for a construction job dressed up. And so I remember my phone rang the next morning like at 530. And it was the boss man. He said, can you be here at such and such time? And I'm like, who is this? You stopped by yesterday. Like, yes, yes, where, where we need to be at. Back to the same site. I got there. I brought my tape measure just to show them I didn't have a tape measure. I was dressed in work clothes. I showed up. This is the craziest thing. I didn't even know how much money I was making. I showed up and he said, hey, can you crown those two by sixes over there? So that's some construction term. So I did. So, so you do kind of know. And I went from doing that to doing this and worked the rest of the week. I'd come home and my wife says, how much were you making? I said, I don't know. <laughs> I guess we'll find out. I don't even know when they pay. I don't know these people. This is, I haven't signed anything. This is, I don't know. And Friday rolled up and he paid. It was more than what I was expecting. And I continued working there that summer and this guy Andy became real good friends and we started working together and worked together for about eight years eight years until I'd moved and we would still talk but I think about that just during life when God says hey stop you've been looking for an answer You've passed by three or four times. Stop. Just go check. See what I've got for you. And I could go on and on with stories that it was only God connections. You can't explain it any other way. But I don't want to remember. I don't want to forget that. I want to remember what God has done. Because this is what will happen 
is life will come at you with a vengeance and you will feel depleted and defeated. You need to pause and begin to think of the goodness of God. Of what God has done in your past for you, the doors he has opened, provisions that he has made, not just for somebody else, but the provisions that he has made for you. And you need to look the devil in the eye and the voices that are trying to speak fear over you and say, I don't think God has done his best work yet. God's not through. It's not over. God has not poured out his last blessing. His promises have not expired. God has not stopped being a provider. God has not stopped being a savior. God has not stopped being a healer. God has not stopped being a restorer. God is still in business today. Hallelujah. And when we pause to remember the goodness of God, woo, God, you are good. God's good when the roof is leaking. Hallelujah. God's good when the car is broke down. Can I get an amen? God's good on Sunday morning when pastor is calling. Can somebody come pick up part of my family because we can't fit all in one car. And God's good when my neighbor shows up. Hallelujah. Come on. Pastor has a hitch a ride to church sometimes. But it's all right. Because I made the church and I stand here this morning. Remembering the goodness of God. The trials of this earth is only temporary. The job situation is temporary. Relate, it's just temporary. Help, it's all temporary. It's temporary in this small capsule called time, but we serve a God that is eternal. And his promises exceed the limitations of time. moves us into eternal things. Could you stand with me this morning and ushers if you would come we're going to celebrate communion and I, 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 as we stop and reflect on God's goodness to us and not all, only are we blessed to be living in this nation today but I just pray God wake us up to the blessings that we have And we're blessed to have a relationship with God. But God, wake us up to the blessings of, of knowing the Lord. Wake us up to the blessings of, of having a Bible. Having a Bible? Somebody got Bibles by the bed, Bibles on your coffee table, Bibles on your phone, Bibles on your iPad, Bible podcast, the B-I-B-L-E, that's the book for me. Come on, somebody. And, and there's nations that they cannot have this. That they will get a Bible and tear out pages and share the pages just to read the Word of God. Oh God, don't let us forget your blessings. Don't let us forget, Lord, where you have placed us and what you have called us to do. And in Luke 22 and 19, he says, this do in what? In remembrance of me. And we're going to celebrate communion. And how we do this here is uh, we, Brother Joe's over here to the left. And Shane's over here to my right or left. And, and so each side of the building. Let's start at the back for those back or elderly. If you'd like to come and make your way. And um, you can receive the wafer and the juice and just make your way back to your seat. And for those of you that would like to celebrate partaking this this morning, you can. Would you come, those of you in the back, begin to make your way. Church folks, if you would, some more church family, if you begin to lead. And, uh, and then they'll serve those that maybe are not able to be mobile this morning or to move. Thank you so much for coming. And, and as you're coming this morning, uh, and as you're coming forward this morning, could you just block everything aside today? Thank God most of us have a day off tomorrow. Well, thank the Lord for that. And you've got plans maybe to fire up the grill, jump in the pool, or make a road trip. But would you set aside some time, maybe even right now, to remember the goodness of God? To remember the goodness of God in your life.
to remember what he has done lest we forget lest we forget let's pay attention and watch ourselves closely so that we do not forget the things yeah I know things can be bad right now I know you're going through things I know life has pressed hard against you but don't let the voice of the world drown out the memories that you have made with God those times that you have felt his presence those times you have picked up his Bible and opened his word and you have read and he has spoke to you those times that he has made a way when there seemed to be no way that God came through for you. Come on. You need to stop to remember. And don't just keep those memories to yourself, but you need to share those. Share those with your children. Share those with your grandchildren. They may look at you like you're crazy and from a different culture, and you may be, but share with them of the goodness of God and what God has done for you and in your life. Come on, sing it, worship to you. to be blessed to live in this country but to be blessed to live in the liberty of Christ Jesus isn't it amazing how tired we how quick we tire of the news cycle that Ukrainian issues and crises are still going on but now we're wanting to know what the Saints football schedule is for this year right that that people across the world are suffering Homes destroyed. You give admissions today, and so Shasta Tony Miller, you can find Shasta Miller on Facebook there in Lithuania, and you can connect with their church over there. Their boys were young as they moved over there, and now they consider that home because that's where they're raised. Twice they've made trips into Ukraine. Listen to what I'm saying. Delivering Kevlar vest for citizens. You hear what I'm saying? 
so that citizens can wear these vests in hopes of saving themselves while they're over there from shrapnel and from everything else. We can't process that. That sounds like a movie that we turn on and we turn off. But we're blessed this morning. And the Bible says to whom much is given, much is required. God, shake us from our apathy. Shake this Laodicean spirit from the church that we are rich and increased with goods and we have need of nothing. The things that we place value on in this life, in this country, can come to a crashing halt very quickly, we have learned. The only thing that remains faithful and true is God's Word. His Word says, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, neither his seed begging for bread. God will take care of his children. And God will provide for His bride, the church. I'm blessed this morning not just to be pastor today, but I am doubly blessed this morning to be a part of the body of Christ. And I want to lean in this year, God. What else do you have me to do, God? Not just behind these walls when it's time, turn the time to turn the mic on at 10 o'clock on Sunday morning and turn it off at 12. But God, where can I be involved in the kingdom from Monday through Saturday, God? That I am an ambassador for Christ. That I am filled with the Spirit of God. That I have been purchased by the blood of Jesus Christ. That I no longer live in fear, but I walk by faith in the promises that God has given me. That I no longer bow and become intimidated. But Lord, let me be a force to be reckoned with. That I change the environment of the room when I walk in by the power of Christ that lives inside of me, God. May we never forget the sacrifice you prayed for us to live that blessed life and the sacrifice, God, that you gave for us to be a part of the body of Christ. That at the end of the day, when everything is stripped away of this earth, we are your son and we are your daughter and we are blessed. And so Luke 22 and 19 says that he took bread and he gave thanks. And he break it. And he gave it to them saying, This is my body which is given for you. Listen to this next statement. This do. This do. In remembrance of me. So as we would take of this wafer this morning, can we do this in remembrance of the Lord this morning? And likewise, also the cup after supper saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. Thank you, Lord, for a body that was broken and the blood that was shed for our healing and for our salvation. Come on, somebody ought to give the Lord some praise this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. So all my life you have been faithful. Yes, you have, God. And all my life you have been so, so to give the Lord praise this morning. Come on, rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in His goodness. In your life, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And thank you so much. As the worship team continues.
continues to sing. If you need to be dismissed, be dismissed. If you need to pray this morning, if you will anoint with oil and pray. If you'd like to come forward and just pray. If you, whatever it is, you, these altars are open this morning. Amen. Have a blessed week. Monday night prayer, Tuesday night seed hour. Don't forget what the Lord has done for you. Don't forget the goodness of God in your life. Share it with somebody else. All my life you have been so, so good. Every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God.